not all graphs intersect at an exact coordinate point. Sometimes they intersect at a decimal. So you need to come up with other methods to find the intersection point when you have a system. The technique that we're going to look at in this lesson is called substitution, which is an algebraic way of getting that intersection point, meaning that we can find the intersection point without having to make a graph. Another reason why this method would be beneficial is if you don't have graph paper nearby or if the equations aren't easily written in slope-intercept form. So we're going to look at the examples today that are not necessarily all written in slope-intercept form, and I'll show you the substitution technique to find the intersection point. There are three things that we need to know first, which are the three steps to solve a system by substitution. The first step is to choose one equation and get the variable alone. Now your next question is, how do you know which variable? Because the equations have two variables. And the answer is, it doesn't matter. You can pick either the x to get alone or the y. Um, either way, you're still going to be able to use this technique. And sometimes solving for y is going to be faster. And sometimes solving for x is going to be faster or better. So you'll see some examples as we go through. The second step is to substitute one equation into the other. And the third step is to solve and find both variables. So here's what that looks like. In example one, we have to solve by substitution. And what you'll notice is that the first step where it says choose one equation and isolate a variable already has been done for us. So this is like a beginner level substitution, where if you look at this equation right here, the y equals 2x minus 4, the variable is already by itself. Now this equation isn't. So in the last lesson, we would have had to write it in slope-intercept form, graph it, and then find their intersection point. But since this already says y equals, I can substitute already now in step number two. So here's how that works. This equation already tells me what the value of y equals. So this piece right here represents the value of y because y equals whatever it says. So wherever I see a y, I can plug in that expression. So I'll rewrite the second equation to say 7x minus 2 times what the first equation was. 2x minus 4 equals 5. Because instead of y, I'm putting what the first equation told me y equals. So now I can distribute by solving. So I'm going to solve by distributing. You just have to be careful. Remember your 7th grade distributing skills. That gives you minus 4x plus 8. And now this brings us back to chapter... Uh, one and also back to seventh grade where you learned how to combine terms. So let's combine. You can do 7x minus 4x to get 3x and then drop a line. The inverse is minus 5, I'm sorry, minus 8. And then we can get the 3x by itself. So you get 3x equals negative 3, and then x equals negative 1. Now your first instinct should be to circle this and say, oh, aha, I found the answer. But remember what a system is. A system are two lines that intersect at a particular point. So this point right here starts off with the value negative 1. I don't know what the other half of the answer is. That's what I have to find out. So the first half of my intersection is negative 1. Now, how do you think we could find the y value? Well, hopefully you are saying that, well, we could just plug it into one of the equations. So I usually pick whatever equation looks friendlier, and obviously the first equation is the friendliest looking. So y equals 2 times negative 1 minus 4. And so I get negative 2 minus 4. So the y value is negative 6. Now the last thing you want to do is confirm that this actually is the intersection point. 
So what you'll do, just to confirm that you have it, this isn't part of the solution plan, is to say, well, let me check negative 1, negative 6 in my two equations. So in equation 1, when you plug in negative 1 and negative 6, do you get a true statement? When you plug in negative 1 and negative 6 into the second equation, do you get a true statement? So pause the video right now and check to see that both equations are true. So you see both equations give you a true statement, which means this is the actual intersection point. So the answer to this question is negative 1, negative 6 is your intersection point. All right, now we're moving on to the dreaded word problem. So pause the video and just read example 2, and then I'll write the equations with you. So like I said in uh, last chapter, in the beginning where you're just creating the equations, you're going to be given this kind of setup where the equations are in words and you just have to put the variables and the numbers in. So I've underlined the important information from the story and what's underlined has been created into equations for you. You just have to plug in the pieces. So let's do it. So it tells you that the number of turkey burgers is X and the number of veggie burgers is Y and that equals the total number of burgers. So this equation is going to be x plus y, because I don't know either of those values, equals uh, the total is 50. Now the second equation tells me that the cost per turkey burger times the quantity of them plus the cost per veggie burger times the number of them equals how much money I paid, which should make sense as you think about it in real life. So let's figure out what the values are. The cost per turkey burger is $2 times x, so I'll just write that as 2x, plus the cost per veggie burger, which is $1.50, I'll just write that as 1.5 since it's just an equation, uh, times y equals the total number of, uh, total amount of money that was spent, which is $90. So now I have my two equations. I'm just going to rewrite them underneath. So now think of this like we just did in example one. The first step was already done for us, whereas here it's not. The, the first step was choose an equation and isolate one of the variables. So looking at both of these equations, I would hope that you would agree with me that the first equation looks significantly easier to move things around rather than the second one, which has coefficients. So I'm going to take the first equation and I'm going to move things around so that one of the variables is by itself. Now you could get the y by itself like we're used to doing, but just to spice things up a little, I'm going to get the x by itself. Ooh, I know, different. So um, I'm, to prove the point that it doesn't matter which variable you solve for. So I'm going to actually move the y. And so I'll get x equals 50 minus y. It doesn't matter what order you write it in because you're just going to plug it in anyway. So now what I want to do is take this, which is equal to x, and plug it into this equation wherever I see an x. So let's do that. Rewrite the equation, but wherever you see x, put 50 minus y. Oh, whoops, plus. And now I have to distribute. You will typically have to distribute in these types of examples. So if you're bad at distributing, you might want to practice that. Uh, I get 100 minus 2y plus 1.5y equals 90. Now it's just a you know, throw back to chapter 1 and math 7 where you combine like terms. So I get 100 minus 0.5y. And now I will move the 100 over. Negative 0.5y equals negative 10. Divide by negative 0.5. And when you solve, you get y equals 20. So remember, this is a half of a coordinate point. So the y value is 20. How do you find the x value? 
plug it into one of the equations. And again, you can pick either one, so whichever one is easier for you, then choose that one. Obviously, I hope that you agree with me that x plus y equals 50 is significantly easier. And you could do this in your head. I'm just going to write it out so you all see where this number is coming from. y is 20, so I'm going to substitute it in. Hence the name, substitution. And you get x equals 30. But you're not going to write 30 comma 20 because that's not really the best way to write it because it was a word problem. The question said, well, it didn't say anything, you had to read it, find the number of turkey burgers and the number of veggie burgers. So I should write it in words like they gave it to me. So the best answer is going to say 30, uh, I forgot what X was, X is turkey burgers. and 20 veggie burgers. All right, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.